Hi everybody, happy holidays. Welcome back to Dr. Bagpipe. I'm Dr. Matthew Welch. Uh, today's video, this is the fourth uh, installment. I wanted to talk briefly about scales. Um, I'm gonna use my practice channel to demonstrate a few scale exercises that uh, I have been playing my entire piping career. Uh, I developed them when I was a kid and um, when I was also interested in trying to figure out what was going on in the experiment, experimental music of Philip Glass. Um, there's a technique there that is called additive and subtractive rhythm, uh, where um, phrases and motifs can grow um, in length or shorten in length as you're playing. So I think scales are super important for a piper um, to uh, you know, practice melodic positions, um, and it really makes uh, playing melodies and breaking down uh, new tunes or even new compositions that you that are not um, classifiable. Uh, it makes them a lot easier to tackle. So, the first exercise that I always just recommend for everybody, and I do every day, is really just going up and down the scale and um, and making it as even as possible. <laughs> And um, you know, I haven't played today, so that's gonna be the first thing that I do, is that. Uh, the second thing that I do is this additive uh, scale inspired uh, by the early music, music of Philip Glass. If you listen to that music, there's a lot of repetition, but there's a lot of growth in small cells. Um, I'm showing you this because this has actually given me a lot of help um, for improvisation work, you know, developing patterns um, in real time while playing with other musicians. So. It starts on low G, adds one note, and then incrementally grows until it hits D. So it goes from low G to low A, and then back to low G, up to B, back to low G, up to C, and then back down to low G, and then it sort of stops at D. From D, I invert it and go the other direction. And then when I hit low G again, I start it over again, going upwards. And what this does is it gives my bottom hand, uh, it warms it up quite nicely. Um, it gives it a range of all the possible lengths of micro patterns. And um, that's one thing where you can actually start to uh, when you're warming up, start to crank it up very fast. So, but here it is slow. Starting on low G again. And I also do that for the top hand. Um, the either an inverted or a mirror image of the same um, thing, but starting on D. And what I can do is I can put them all together. So I practice them at different speeds and sometimes practice going uh, up, you know, up and down in tempo so that I can get uh, a range of uh, fluidity in the, t in the uh, technique. And I think it's kind of important to develop what I would call a legato technique uh, prior to just um, emphasizing on grace note articulation. There are a lot of note to note changes in bagpipe music that do not involve a grace note and those need to be smooth as well. Um, in my own particular music, um, I have found that um, I, I like playing legato and sometimes leave grace notes out, not just for the, um, the technical ease of it because it's not any easier playing legato, but for the, uh, just the smoother sound um, and that it sort of references other musics uh, and not so much Highland music. But anyway, I think it's great for a Highland piper to know this one. <laughs> So 
So also, I believe um, this can be applied to a number of pentatonic scales, um, which I'll introduce in the next video. Okay, happy piping. Check out uh, drbagpipe.com in the YouTube channel. Subscribe, hit like on uh, at Dr. Bagpipe on Facebook, and happy piping, happy holidays.